Uh, others might know me as well from the Joomla Screw Club. Uh, I made those uh, ones for the Joomla World Conference, which I brought an entire uh, suitcase. Uh, I made it through the customs of the US with it, so that was nice. Um, today, or yesterday, I flew in uh, the normal ones, so which you all found in your bag. I'm not sure if you tried them. Uh, if not, it might be a good moment in the afternoon, refreshment, uh, get some new energy. Um, about myself, I really love contributing to Joomla, uh, both locally or, uh, as internationally. I do have my own uh, Joomla agency back in the Netherlands called Perfect Web Team, where we uh, do the entire web development from designing to development and the, the, the maintenance afterwards. Um, all of might know me my extension, ACL manager. Users already of that extension in the room? Nobody using it? Great. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> um, the slides in the presentation, I will publish them on my website. So you're welcome to write down whatever you want, but I will publish them online as well. So Joomla ACL. Who actively used Joomla ACL until now? Or have used it? Who tried? No. <laughs> okay, so Joomla ACL. Anyone knows where it stands for? Oh, it's already there. That's an easy one. Access <coughs> control list. And uh, within Joomla, we basically have two types of ACL system to make it easy for you to understand. One of them is about the visibility of content. We all know, I guess, this type of drop down we see uh, with menu items. Uh, with articles, with modules, categories, etc., etc. That's for the visibility of that piece of content on the website itself. And the other part is the actions on objects, like create, delete, uh, etc. Those are two different systems in Joomla. Before jumping into the ACL, I would go. I would like to go back to the basic first. So, get an overview about the ACL system within Joomla. We have a user, and we have permissions. And those permissions can be uh, several types. We have the site login, and that means we can log in on the front end of the website. We have the administrator login, we can log in on the back end of the website. We have the offline access, so when you turn your website offline, it's still possible for the user group that has that allowed to log in. We have the super admin and slash configure action, the super admin is only available in the global configuration. Once you allow that action, the user group turns into a super user group and will be able to do anything regardless of any other ACL setting. Then we have the access administrator interface. And that means we can access a certain component in the backend. And then a couple other actions around objects, create, delete, edit, edit state, and edit open. Who knows what edit state means? En enable disable? Yeah. Purpose, no purpose? Yeah. So enable state is who can actively change the, the status of an object, like unpublishing, archiving, or uh, trashing it. And then we have the group. And the group is in the middle of it. And the last part of the ACL system is the access level. So how is the relation between this? A user is assigned to one or multiple user groups. Then we have the permissions, which are set for a group. And the access level contains a one of or multiple user groups. So the groups are always in the middle. It also means that you can't assign permissions directly <coughs> to a user. A lot of people are wondering if it's possible to set that. No, the group is always in the middle. So that also means that if you want to have specific access for one user, you still have to create that group, set up the permissions for it, and assign that single user to it. That's kind of weird sometimes, because why do I have to create the group? But you can look at the group as a different thing. I personally prefer to look at it as a role on the website. You know, uses. Uh, the group type, but everywhere you read group, when you think of role, it makes much more sense. So you define a role with certain permissions and assign a user to it. Yeah, possibly one, but 
could be more. So when we mix it all together, this is the kind of scheme of the Joomla ACL system. Kind of visual, still compl complicated. To make it more easy, we have a kind of ACL levels within Joomla. And Joomla not really uh, mention it in this way, but I prefer <coughs> to do it in like the level kind of way to understand it more easier. And when I talk about levels, I talk about the highest level, the global configuration, um, where you can set permissions. The second level is the component permission. Each component uh, allows you to set all the permissions again. Then we have permissions on level three for the category and modules, for example, in Joomla. But with an extension, it could be whatever uh, that extension is using. In the core Joomla, we have another fourth level, which are articles. You can set permissions for each article individually. Not, not always the best way, but it is possible. So there's inheritance between those settings. Let me give you a couple of examples. <coughs> By default, everything is, is configured to not set. And not set in Joomla means not allowed. And that's something to uh, recognize because I often see that people are going to deny certain actions on the highest level, on the global co co configuration. But it doesn't make any sense because it's already not allowed. If you're going to deny it, you only make it more complicated to allow it later on. So when I would allow like an action like create, on the global configuration, it inherits down to the component category and article permissions. So when you allow the create action on the global configuration, anywhere within the entire Joomla website, the user can, the user group can create something. <coughs> if you want to prevent that for a certain category, you can do that by denying it for that specific category. But you can also leave the global configuration to not set and then only allow the create action for one component, for example, the article manager. And then they can create content within that component. You can even go one step further and leave the global configuration to not set, the component options to not set, not set, and only allow the creation of content in one specific category. It's getting complicated when you deny the global configuration. If you then try to allow for a certain component, you won't be able to do it because it's a conflict. In Joomla, deny will always win. So once you set con uh, action to deny, you cannot allow it anymore for any of the lower levels. So try to prevent that denied action as long as possible. Otherwise your flexibility is gone. To make it even more easy, we have another inheritance way because with the Joomla user groups. So when you set permissions for a manager group, the administrator group will inherit the permissions set for the manager. Same for the author. When you set permissions for the author group, the editor permission group will inherit that setting. So that means that when you combine those inheritance, the permissions can come <laughs> from the two sides. <coughs> so when we have the public group with the nested register group, the nested author, the nested editor and publisher, when I would allow the create action for a certain component, you'll see that the nested groups can allow, but also for any category within that component. You can deny this action, and then the nested groups, the publisher, is also denied. Those of you, who, who of you have been using Joomla 1.5? I love. This will confuse you, because in Joomla 1.5, each nested groups was allowed to do more within a Joomla website. So in Joomla 1.5, the publisher had more rights on a website than an author. In the new structure, it doesn't have to be that case. And another thing, I, I can't allow this, for example, this specific action, I can't allow it anymore, because it has been denied. So, why bother about that complicated Joomla ACL system at all? Any ideas? Why would I use the Joomla ACL? For some of them. Sorry? You can um, set up the user groups to control the bits of content. 
this, this, to allow access to a certain area, right? Or the content. Mm -hmm. Workflow. Workflow. Other suggestions? For me, one of the most important reasons is the usability of a website. Mm -hmm. Who of you are building websites for clients? Do they enjoy using Joomla in the backend? Yes. Do they find it complicated? Yes. Right. I do think a lot of our clients do find it very, really complicated to access the backend. With the Joomla ACL system, you could allow access to only the specific areas a client needs to have access to. That prevents a lot of other options and points where a client has to make a decision or can get confused about certain options. You remove that. So for example, when we build websites for our clients, we provide them a super user account. For in case they are not happy with us anymore, they can move to another client or whatever. But for the day-to-day -day use, we provide them a specific account with only access to the area they need on the website. Uh, it's the Don't Make Me Think concept of Steve Group. Have you ever heard of that concept, the book? Don't Make Me Think? It's a great recommendation as well. It's about <coughs> don't confuse your web users or the end users of your website. And ACL can help a lot with that. Another thing is, when I provide uh, support for ACL Manager, I get often questions for uh, being able to allow access for a specific component in the backend only. For example, Zoom. Those are quite a lot of tickets over the years. Uh, another example, Virgmark. A lot of people want to allow access to Virgmark only and allow a user to browse the orgs. Still, a lot of components don't offer that support while this support. So, a question right now. You, you're talking about reducing the complexi complexity. Mm -hmm. Does that mean the options are visible? Yeah. Okay. So, to make it more kind of visual, <laughs> um, I'm going to do a demo of setting up backend access uh, to a Joomla website. Um, <coughs> demos can go wrong, but I'm pretty sure that we can achieve this job with this group. Um, what I often see, and I hope you, you can recognize yourself in that, is that people would like to allow access, for example, when they make a website for a company, and the company has two departments, and there's only a marketing department that uh, should be able to create and edit content in one category, for example, the blog category. So I would like to use that example as a start so we can set up backend access to the website and allow only a certain user group to publish content in that category, no other areas. Okay? So I have. Uh, a Joomla 3. Point latest version install. No, sender and sender. Which is uh, installed with a, a sample data uh, installation package. So, what will be the first step to achieve that? What should I do? Category group. Okay, let's go with the group suggestion. So we start to create a group. We do already have these groups. Who's actually using those groups, all of them, in every website they create? Nobody, right? Anyone knows why these groups are here? History. <laughs> Sorry? History? History, yeah, correct. It's basically for the legacy support when you migrate a Joomla 1.0 or 1.5 website to this new version. But we can solve that easily. We select all groups and go to delete them. <laughs> Is that smart or not? No. No. Okay. Should I delete some of them? Or should I leave all the groups over here? Limit <laughs> Sorry? You can limit. Leave it on the same side. Okay. I prefer to remove them. And I'm only going to keep a couple ones that are useful. The first one I'm going to leave here is public. Because the public user group is basically any visitor on your website without logging in is the public user group. So let's keep it there. The other one, 
I will leave, is the guest user group. Anyone who knows what the guest user group is about? Anyone who is not logged in. Not logged in. So the guest user group, uh, for example, when you uh, would like to show uh, a certain module only for not the login module, for only people that are not logged in on your website, the guest group is useful. So we leave that over here. Should I keep the manager? No? Correct. I'm going to remove it. Administrator? No. I'm going to remove it. Registered? Yeah. Yeah. Good decision. Uh, registered group is a very basic uh, group with people that do have access to the website. And I, use, I usually leave it over there. The author group. No? Okay. Delete it. Editor. Publisher. Yeah. Super user. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so that comes down to this list where we're going to delete the manager, administrator, author, editor, and publisher group. And there's a small bug, so I have to do it in two steps. <laughs> so, I only have four groups left. The public, the guest, the registered, and the super user group. When, when do those actually apply? So if you delete a group while someone's logged in, mm -hmm. have they already got the token for that group and the permissions, even if you delete the group before they log out? So in options of the user manager, you can set the group a user get access to once they register. Right. By default, it's set to the registered user group, and the registered user groups only has the permission to log in on the front end. No other permissions. Yeah. So that's by default in human. Unless you change that yourself. So when you make the registered group uh, allowing access, backend access, and allow to do everything, that could be uh, a security issue. Yeah. So when I go back to my user groups, another thing. And um, I'm not sure how it is in the UK, but super users. Is that really clear about what the user group is about? I see some edge shape here. I prefer to change that. I mean, you can change it to whatever name you want. So what would be a good name? God. <laughs> <laughs> Use the, 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 the web manager or the web administrator or administrator. What is useful over here in the UK? I know a very Dutch word, but administrator? Okay, so the public group is kind of clear the administrator, the guest, and the register. So those are the groups. So I'm not going to create a new user group. And it's, for example, the, uh, the marketing department that wants to publish articles in a blog category. What would be a good name for the group? Marketing. Marketing. Yeah. I disagree. Why? <laughs> Remember what I said a couple slides ago? Roles. Role. The role. Clothes. Mm. Blog. Blog manager or blog poster or blogger? Or when you could have more bloggers, you could marketing blogger. Now it's no longer group name, but a role name. Okay, so then we have another option provided by Joomla, the group parent. And I can choose between public administrative guest and register. What will be a good option? Sorry? Registered? Yeah. Registered? I leave it to public. And the reason for that, when I try to prevent the nested groups as long as possible, is that when inheritance comes down to somewhere, it is always the level instead of the parent user groups. So we're uh, getting rid of one direction of inheritance by not using nested groups. It can be useful, but for now we stick to the public. So we have the marketing blogger user group created. What's the next step? Oops, sorry, um, let's rewind on this. Yeah. If it's a group, then semantic thing, wouldn't it be plural? Administrators, guests, marketing bloggers, and registered users. Mm -hmm. so you could change those namings as well. Okay. And um, they are all able to change the name, but 
I just showed with one example to think about what is the best naming convention. But Sorry, if you do have a better suggestion for the register, I will certainly change it. Have you, have you got an example where you wouldn't want rights that a registered user has that you uh, that you wouldn't want to apply to the market and service? I'm, I'm, I'm confused about why you'd have that at the top level. And so your question is why I'm not using so why the, the reason why you're not I, I understand you said you, you didn't want to uh, have market and bloggers nested inside registered because yeah. you want to uh, be able to manage them completely separately. So by default, the registered groups only has access to the front end of the website. Right. It is possible okay. that this marketing group don't even have access to the front of the website, only the back end. What we're going to set up right now. What I usually do is, uh, and I can show a quick example of it, uh, no, I'm not going to show it right now, but what you could do is create a role with uh, backend access or whatever, and only allow the backend access for that role, and then nest the marketing blogger under that group. So that means that you don't have to set up for each of the group the backend access, you only do it once, and all nested group in error. But Maybe when we do have time left, we will go to that. But for now, I try to keep it this way. So, is this clear until now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next step. Define category. Sure. Define the category. Assign the category. Define the I'm going to do one other thing first. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create a test user. Yeah. So we can test after each change what the user can do or can't. So, We have the blogger. Very hard password. And which user groups I'm going to check for? Leave this one over here or? No, it's not me. Four or So I'm going to save it. What I usually prefer to do myself is, this is the Chrome browser, and open another browser for testing the, uh, the permissions. So I do have this other browser, I'm going to log in. <coughs> and with my blogger user, okay. Warning, you do not have access to this administrative section of the website which makes sense because we haven't configured any permissions yet. So let's do that as a next step. Go back to my administrator user. And I go to the system, global configuration, the highest level of the permission. There's the permission tab. I click on my newly created user group and change the administrator login to allow. This row shows the calculated setting, but it's not directly <coughs> up to the So before you see any changes, you have to save it. Which is going to change in the next Joomla version because it will be uh, uh, shown directly. So which is a small but nice improvement. So we have to administrate the login a lot right now. Let's see if that makes any sense with my test user. Great. <laughs> That's uh, pretty don't make me think, or maybe it is make me think. But so we, at least we're logged in on the website. Um, this blogger user group needs to have access to the art manager to, allow, to create content in the blogger category. So what will be the next step? Sorry? Create a category. Create a category. Okay. Mm -hmm. I go to the content, the category. And because of the sample data set, I choose uh, the blog category is already there. So what will be the next step? Assign. <coughs> a special user group. I need to create a new user group? No, no, just assign some permissions to categories to allow so you access. <laughs> So when I open this category, there's a permission tab. And there's a marketing block. 
So I could allow some actions over here. We would like that this user group can create content and edit content and okay. edit their own. Which is really nice if we do not allow, so when I, I can go to quickly save it so you see the permissions. But if you do have multiple users assigned to this user group that should only be able to edit their own articles, I should not allow the edit action, but only allow the edit own action. In that way, the users, even when they're in the same user group, can't edit each other's article. So I'm going to change that back to inherited. So in the end, we have the create action and the edit own. So let's see if that makes any sense to my test user. Not really. Because that user but don't have access to the component. component. Yeah. Access to the component. Very good point. We've now been allowing the create and edit own action, but we haven't allowed any access to the component itself. So we have to go to the article component, com content, and there it's hidden in under the option button, the permission tab, and here we have the marketing group again, with several actions. The configure ACL and options, configure options only, access administrator interface, and create, delete, edit, and all which one should I allow? It's only one. I create. Administration. Create. Yeah. But then they can create uh, <laughs> And we allow that for one category. So the access is indeed correct. So in this way, I allow the marketing blogger to access the com content component. Let's see if that makes any difference. I did the refresh, right? Yes. Yeah. Still not working. Well, then you have to log out and log back in. <coughs> log out and log back in. Oh, that's my mistake. Um, Wait. Sorry? You, you yeah, have okay. answer? I, th I think I stumbled upon this issue and it had cost me at least two hours. <laughs> I think you need to uh, apply the uh, special access group to the user, isn't it? The good news is that you learned something in the two hours. <laughs> <laughs> but the bad news is, is that's not just you. Two is pretty quick, to be honest. A lot of people <coughs> end up here with their trial to set up permissions in Joomla. You want to know how I solved it? I had an, an extension related <coughs> to ACL management that helped a bit. Yeah. No, but that's indeed the solution, but I would like to show how you can solve it with the Joomla core. Um, so what David is saying is that he, that he had to change something with the access level. In Joomla, in the front end, we have modules. But the back end also has modules. So when we go to the extension manager, the module manager, and filter for the administrator, we see all kinds of modules. And one of them is the admin menu, for example. And does this give you any hints? Not yet? When I look at this row, there's an access column which is set to special. We created a new user group, but we haven't included this newly created user group to the access level special. So I go back to the access levels. There's a special level, and we see that only the administrator is included right now. Let's include the marketing blogger so they can see the modules in the backend. Going back to my test user, and refresh the page. Still not working. <laughs> what was your solution, David? I see you thinking like, hmm. Log out, log in again. <laughs> Great, if you're trying to turn it off and turn it <laughs> in. Exactly. <again>. So, 
do gato. And look in. And here we are. The access level information in Joomla is stored in a user session. And a user session is keeping alive as long as your session. So also this kind of small issue it will take a couple people many hours to find out. And in the end, they solve it by going for some sleep, very frustrated late night. In the morning, they try it again, and it works. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a nice way to find out, but then you still don't know what is actually making the difference. But, so when you make any changes to access levels, always log out with any test user and log in again before seeing the actual changes. Or write the plugin to refresh the session. Write a plugin to refresh the sessions. That's also an, uh, an option, but uh, it is a kind of complicated. Sure. <laughs> I know that uh, there, there have been some work in seeing how that can be changed, but there are also security things around that, so it's unfortunately not uh, directly there. So <coughs> my test user now has access to the backend and the article manager, which is kind of empty. And that's not really normally. I'm going to change one thing quickly. Uh, no. <coughs> this is what you normally will see. So I do see the articles, but I can't click on them. However, I can create a new article. My first. And the only option I can select is the blog category. Say so close it. And now you can see the newly created article, <coughs> which I can click on to edit. But one thing I can't change is the unpublished to published. If you would like to have a kind of process in place where another user group first needs to read <coughs> something created before it being published, it is possible. You basically set up a nested group under the group we just created, but the only difference is that we allow the edit state for that group. So, uh, no. No? Because uh, they've still got their rights only to edit their own. Isn't that right? Yeah, the, the, the review group is still having that edit own. But, but edit own doesn't mean that they can publish their own. So, but the, the change the state, can they change the state of all or just their own? Yes, that's correct. They can change the state of all, which right. makes it uh, a kind of complex to. So when you allow, oh, I'm over here. Um, I can show an example by going to the blog category, and I previously only allowed the edit own. If I'm now going to allow the edit state as well for this test user, save it, review it. <coughs> I'm able to publish it, but I'm also able to unpublish an article of another editor, which is <coughs> a kind of strange, could be fixed probably, to make sure that you can only uh, allow, if you, the edit only is allowed to only be the ones you can edit. <coughs> so this is how you can set it up in the, in the front end, um, or in the back end. When you would have the same user, on the front end of the website, mm -hmm. oh, I can't look in. What am I missing? Sorry, I didn't think you gave them access to that. Correct. Right. Access to that. Registered. Exactly. Registered. So, those are two valid points. One was like you haven't allowed access to the front end, which is correct when I go to the permission. And marketing builder, the site login, the front end login is not allowed. The other um, suggestion was to add and to the register group <coughs> as well, would solve it as well, because the register group has allowed front end login access. But I'm going to change it to the site. And right now, I refresh it. Mm. 
And now I can <coughs> create a new post. And can only add it to the blog. But there's a small change, and I'm going to show you. Because when I would allow this same user group to also publish articles to the uncategorized group, uh, so Martin Weber, they can create something and save it, they will be able to choose between two categories in the back end. But when I go to the front end, it's still one category. Why? The menu item called create a post in the user menu, author menu, is the menu type create article. That menu type has an option to set a default category, which is set to block. That's useful for allowing a creation on the front end to one specific category. But it's not useful when you have to uh, have combined a form based on ACL. So when you change it to no, the user can select both categories. So that's a small thing to keep in mind when you have that menu type and you want to use, make use of the ACL, you have to set this to no. So I'll just check one thing. On, on the mm -hmm. um, group that you set up, mm -hmm. why, can I, has, why can I see access to the system and the global settings when really you don't want to see the content component? Is, sorry, it's in again? In the, the new group that you've set up, yeah. which has very limited access, on the menu bar, they can still see the system tab. Why? Why is that? Because you wouldn't want them to see any global configuration. You, don't want them to you mean over here in the back? End? Yeah, in the back end. Surely, I'd only want them to see content and help, not yeah. system. Why is, why is that? So your question is, why do I see system and help besides content? I don't want them to be able to go into global config. Oh. So the system is not showing the same as an administrator. It's only showing the control panel, which is default. The help one uh, is showing a couple of Joomla links. But I can imagine you don't want to show that to your clients. Yeah. There's no ACL for this. But there's no option. Right. I go to my module manager, to my administrator modules, the admin menu, and also the backend modules have several options. And one of them is help menu item. And when I change that, the control panel is even more clean. Okay. The same for the other modules. <coughs> you could uh, unpublish them or change the access levels in a way that they can't see those modules. Excellent, thank you. So in this way, you can really <laughs> make sure that the backup of your website is only showing the areas the client needs to access. So they don't see any all the options. They only see what they need. This can be done, done for uh, a lot of components. So when you go to your global configuration, you see a list of all components installed. And when I would like to allow access, for example, to the ACL manager, you can go to the permission. And marketing order. Allowed. My test user will see the component menu, but only with the components allowed. So when you do have a web shop extension, or you do have like a Kiba backup installed, and you only want to allow a user to download the backup, it is possible by allowing <coughs> only access to this area. Um, I don't think I have that much time left. Um, so I would quickly like to show uh, the difference between, right now with the, the, the permissions, we have seen a lot of screens, like global configuration, the, the category options, the component options. The difference that ACL manager making is that when you open <coughs> a user group, you see all the permissions of this user group in one screen. So when I would like to allow access to the, uh, the context as well, I allow it, save it, 
and there's the other screen. So ACL Manager is making use of the Juma core ACL system, but making it visually in a different way. Another aspect is that it can detect issues with your website. Quite often with migrated websites, the SSA will get pretty messed up. So with a couple of clicks, you can review those items and solve them, and then you're pretty sure that everything is properly set up in your database. Could improve the speed a lot. I did have some clients that had a lot of articles, but missing all kinds of permissions and relations. So the table was looking for references and parent levels and couldn't find them and really uh, slowed down the website. Besides that, I added a couple of features, which you already saw a bit earlier, um, is that when the user is going to the article manager, they can only edit the one they are at last. But they do see the other ones in Joomla by default. There are many cases where you don't want the user to see the other content on the website. Uh, even the title might be something that can't be seen by other users. So I added an option which allowed to set editable articles only. And when you set that up, they only see the ones that they have permissions for. And in this case, it's the edit state that you see the other ones as well. But instead of the, the 10 that were before that, you only see the ones where you can perform an action for it. And the same is for the modules. And the nice thing of the module access is that you now also, when you have custom uh, module position with some custom HTML on your website, you can allow access in the backend to only edit the content of the mo that module rather than all modules, where they can even disable your main menu and things like that that you don't want to use to access. Um, that's basically the ACL. The ACL system is really something you have to go to try out and see and, and work with it and getting used to it. Uh, I hope I've made it a bit more clear with the demonstration and kind of show you the gaps that could save you a lot of hours. Right, David? <laughs> At um, least two. Let's see, let's have two questions and otherwise I will be around for the rest of the day so you can find me. There you are, the first two. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah, so your question is, can I set up a certain access that people can delete something but not empty the trash that yeah. is really done? Yeah, so not totally deleted. Yeah, so uh, that is possible. When I filter for my uh, blog category, uh, you see the toolbar with the options, and one of them is trash. I can trash an item because that's a change of the state. But when I filter for the trash items, there's no option to empty the trash, which is usually there. It is only possible when I would allow, uh, go back to that category, permissions, marketing blocker, when I allow the delete action, oh, denied, allow. <laughs> when I now refresh it, there's the button empty trash. Just by not allowing the delete button, they can't empty the trash. They can put it in the trash, but they can't empty it. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. There wasn't, yeah, uh, the, um, you're saying that the, in this instance, they aren't able to publish. Is that, if you switch on publishing, they could change the state of any of the mm -hmm. Is there a way that you could just change the state of the articles that they own? Not yet. No. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's on my list to, to fix in Joomla ACL. <laughs> There's a, I do have a list with items that I think that can be improved within the Joomla ACL system, uh, and that's one of them. So, uh, because I think it makes more sense when they can only publish uh, or change the state. The question is, do we need to add another action like edit, uh, no, edit own, edit state, edit own state, yeah. it's a bit weird, but 
uh, do we need to add another action or make sure it's kind of automatically because you can only change the state of your own articles? But it's not possible yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. One bonus question here. <laughs> Thank you. You have a um, multi one side. Is possible, is possible allow user of groups only for one language? The language? So your question is, can I set up the ACL for one language yeah. and the ACL for another language? Yeah. No, that's not possible. But um, <laughs> by default, the Duma multi-language system, uh, you still create two categories, right? And one for one category, you set the language to yeah, but what, what English. Yeah, what happened with the models, for example? Sure. What happened with the models? You, if you want that one user enter in the model that is in English? Yeah. Another user enter in the model that is in Yeah, but then you have two modules. Yeah. Which uh, <coughs> you can set the permissions for, for each of the modules. Since Yuma 3.3, I guess, um, it is possible to uh, set permissions per module. So over here, there's also the permission. Yeah. But that does. It means that you need to create then two groups, like for English people and Spanish people, or not? Yeah. So, so what you could do is when uh, you you allow only the modules to edit it for Spanish people, when they go to the monument, they only see the modules they can edit in their language. Yeah, they, but uh, by default, it's not completely <coughs> possible, but uh, because Joomla will show all modules, but you can only click the ones uh, that you can edit. But uh, next, uh, similar to the uh, article options, uh, I added an option in the ACL manager to allow the editable, editable modules only. So that way you can really provide the list for each language specifically. So thank you for coming in. Um, I will be around. The coffee break is right now. So if you do have any questions, just find me in the description. Thank you.